The Carolina colony was located on the southern edge of England's North American Empire. According to its second and final charter, issued in 1665, its boundaries, at least in theory, encompass land not only claimed, but also already partially occupied by rival Spain, which had founded its Florida colony a century earlier. Carolina's proprietors realized that an English incursion south of Virginia might provoke a Spanish attack. So they required all able-bodied male colonists between the ages of 17 and 60 to serve as citizen soldiers in a provincial militia, equipping them with the propellant that had brought clouds of acrid white smoke to the battlefields of Europe, gunpowder. The cargo manifest for the first fleet contains an account of the materials of war that the proprietors purchased for the colony. Number six on the list is gunpowder, 30 barrels of the explosive. Acquired for 108 pounds sterling, about $32,000 in modern money, the powder ranked among the expedition's top 10 most expensive items. In the modern vernacular, we refer to any wooden cask held together by hoops as a barrel. In the 17th century, however, a barrel was primarily a unit of volume measurement with a capacity of 32 gallons. So 30 barrels would hold 960 gallons. That's the equivalent of 19 bathtubs full of gunpowder, but I wouldn't recommend lighting a candle next to one of those. The consensus among historians is that gunpowder was invented in China more than a thousand years ago. By the early 14th century, the propellant had taken root in Europe, where innovators further refined the recipe and made significant advancements in firearms technology. Referred to as black powder today to distinguish it from the modern smokeless variety, historic gunpowder is a mixture of three substances, saltpeter, charcoal, and sulfur. Saltpeter, scientifically potassium nitrate, is the predominant ingredient. This crystalline compound is made up of positively charged potassium ions bound to negatively charged nitrate ions. As an oxidizer, saltpeter provides the oxygen for the reaction, which increases the burn rate of the other components. The second most abundant ingredient in the mixture is charcoal. It provides the fuel in the form of carbon. Lastly, sulfur, also known as brimstone, stabilizes the mixture and reduces the temperature needed for ignition. After it's been ignited, it's the sulfur that leaves behind that rotten egg smell. Gunpowder production in England tied the island nation to the global economy. Although charcoal could be produced domestically from managed woodlands of willow and alder, sulfur had to be imported, mainly from the volcanic island of Sicily in the Mediterranean. Furthermore, national saltpeter shortages led England to expand its trade with India for potassium nitrate. While King Charles II placed the burden of defending Carolina on the proprietors and the colonists themselves, he did contribute 12 great guns or cannons to the cause. In June 1669, two months before the first fleet sailed, England's Board of Ordnance delivered four demi culverins and eight sakers to the expedition's commander. The park has two demi culverins and four sakers, all reproductions mounted on the gun platform. Demi culverins fired iron projectiles that ranged in weight from nine to 12 pounds, while Sakers fired six pound shot. Powder charges could vary, going as high as eight pounds for a Demi culverin and four for a Saker. While the King provided the cannons, the proprietor supplied the handheld firearms. 200 state-of-the-art flintlock muskets, along with the bandoliers or shoulder belts to hold the powder and shot. The muskets alone represented the expedition's third largest expenditure, coming in at 170 pounds sterling, about $50,000 in today's money. Gunpowder gave the English colonists the military capability to secure a foothold in a contested land. It enabled them to negotiate from a position of strength in their relations with various native peoples, as well as to actively challenge Spain's dominion of the American Southeast.